Ladies and gentlemen, aviation geeks and frequent flyers, my name is David and welcome to this new episode of our airline review series, Brutally Honest. Today we're going to take a closer look at Air Canada's transatlantic economy class and um, for those of you who haven't seen Brutally Honest before, um, I believe that whether a flight is good or bad mostly just um, is determined by whether your expectations are met or whether they aren't because when you're flying on a low-cost airline, your expectations for the flight are just vastly different than when you're flying on a full service carrier. So um, as always, I compiled some expectations for our flight and then we're going to take a closer look as to whether Air Canada is meeting them or not. And uh, as always, I also ask you guys on our YouTube channel, on the community page, what your expectations were so that I can check your expectations for an Air Canada transatlantic flight as well. Um, I've listed some of the basic expectations here. I mean, those are just obvious things that you would expect from most long haul economy class airlines, Air Canada. Um, we have reviewed Air Canada before. We have done a trip report about a flight from Frankfurt to Vancouver a while ago. I'm going to link it right up here for you. Um, and from what I remember um, cutting this trip report, because actually my colleague Felix flew that flight, um, what I remember was that Air Canada was a relatively uninteresting airline but not in a negative way just in a there wasn't anything that stood out particularly um, so this is basically my expectation for this flight today as well there is going to be probably a hot meal right after takeoff there is going to be some form of second meal snack box whether it's hot or cold gonna see about that um, there's gonna be an in-flight entertainment system the leg room is going to be okay not too bad not too good just all in all a solid flight it gets you from A to B but nothing that really stands out positively over um, all of their competition um, so um, some of the expectations some of you mentioned online um, I've listed here as well um, those things I'm going to take a look out for too and um, I think the biggest question mark for me is going to be what the second meal is going to be like because most airlines serve a hot meal right after takeoff um, and then it depends on the airline whether they serve a second hot meal or a little hot snack or like a cold snack box and especially what the variety and quality of that's going to be. Um, for me, that's always a great indicator to measure how serious an airline is about offering a good product. Um, my basic expectation is that it's going to be a cold, basic snack box, the most basic thing you can provide as a second meal service. Um, if they would serve a hot snack, I would be very positively surprised and I would really appreciate it. All right, um, so let's check some expectations. So our flight today is going to be operated by Boeing 787-9, the backbone of Air Canada's long-haul fleet and the aircraft type that they use most on transatlantic routes. Um, it is a very basic aircraft type that is used by many airlines around the globe and um, the economy class cabin there features a 333 configuration with three seats on one window side, three seats in the middle and three seats on the other window side. Um, that is the same configuration that 99% of airlines install on their Boeing 787s. Um, so the only variable here to look out for is going to be the leg room. So flight time is going to be around nine and a half hours, which is a pretty standard time for transatlantic flights. It's not a West Coast flight, which sometimes clock in at around 11 hours, where a lot of airlines do serve a hot snack or a full second meal. Um, it is going to be one of the shorter transatlantic flights. It is going to be from Vienna to Toronto. So um, nine and a half hours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you to Alpha Five Eight Nine Nine to Toronto. The flight is now ready for boarding. Okay. Hello. Thank you, sir. Thirty-five. Over and down. Thank you. Thank you. 
So this is the economy class cabin and as you can see each seat is equipped with its own in-flight entertainment screen. Right there on the seat waiting for you already is a pillow. Unfortunately it's with one of those single use uh, pillowcases which tend to be quite scratchy. Um, and there's also a what seems to be quite small blanket. The legroom is um, actually quite good. It's more than I expected, that's for sure. Um, I'm 1.8 meters tall, which is pretty average for a person my age. Um, in the seat pocket, you will find the, the safety card, the magazine, everything you might need. Down here, you'll find a universal power outlet, and there are two per each three seats, so um, not everyone gets his own, but um, you have two for each three seats, but there's also a USB port right there to charge um, small electronic devices, and there is the uh, uh, audio port right here. There's also an adjustable headrest, which I appreciate greatly on long haul flights. I mean, most airlines do have this on long haul flights, but I tend to come across some airlines from time to time which don't, and it does make flying long haul a lot more comfortable. For your safety, you must wear your seatbelt when the seatbelt light has been turned on, and we suggest wearing it only when the sign is turned off. For your safety, gardez toujours votre ceinture bouclée lorsque la consigne est allumée. Nous vous conseillons de la garder attachée en tout temps, même après l'extinction de la consigne. Service is over now, and um, it was the 
the most basic meal service that I would still describe as a good meal service. So it wasn't really a full dessert that was just, you know, a cookie served with the meal. Um, I do appreciate the water bottle and uh, I do appreciate that alcoholic beverages were offered for free in economy class as well, which is a standard feature on most airlines on long haul flights in economy class, but still not all airlines do that. So I do appreciate to have been able to drink some Canadian beer on this flight. Um, the only downside of the flight so far for me was that they didn't have like a little snack service before uh, lunch, which is very common with most airlines that you get, you know, a little pack of pretzels or some nuts or anything uh, alongside a drink before the main meal is actually served. Um, but other than that, so far the flight is, is, is okay. Let's get back to the seat and uh, continue the flight. Nearing the end of the flight, we're soon going to start our approach into Toronto. And I do have to say, especially considering there was a hot snack before landing and not like a cold snack box um, that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, I do think this flight was very average, but a, slightly above average. So um, if you ever get, um, if you ever find a good deal on Air Canada, um, I really don't think that there is any reason to not choose them. Um, however, it's not going to be like a flight on on an airline like Delta or Swiss, which really has a very high level of service even in economy class. It is very average, they do get you from A to B um, with a reasonable amount of comfort, with uh, uh, good meals and um, for a good price uh, oftentimes as well. So um, I enjoyed the flight so far. Um, I have a quite tight connection in Toronto, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to check in with you guys again after I landed. Um, but until then, Thank you very much for watching and um, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.